Hi, so today we'll be discussing the paper InstaFlow, One Step is Enough for High Quality Diffusion Based Text to Image Generation. What is this paper about? Uh, it is about making one step diffusion models. So one step text to image generation, high quality. So essentially what they did is that they took stable diffusion, which is multi-step and requires a lot of time did some magic on it and then distilled it to a single step model. Uh, and they say that that particular model is almost, uh, is very near to stable diffusion like quality. And to their knowledge, this is the first one step model which can do this. Okay, why do we even need one step models? Because currently diffusion models I have a multi-step sampling process and which makes them very slow. So it would be good if we have a one-step model which is faster, much faster. They say n times faster than an n-step model. Uh, so the magic is something called rectified flow, which is from a previous paper by the same author. Uh, and the main idea there is that it is better sh shown here that in reflow so in current models your latent trajectories from your noise to your image is curved it is complicated and such trajectories are harder to distill because they're complex what their reflow approach does is that it instead of having these curved trajectories it makes these trajectories straight so that these are easier to generate so that they are easier to distill i'll go into more detail later but that is the uh, 100 feet view of this so the core of rectified flow lies in its reflow procedure, which straightens the trajectories of probability flows, refines the coupling between noise and images, and facilitates the distillation of the process of student models. So they propose a text condition pipeline to turn stable diffusion into an ultra fast one step model in which they in which their approach plays a critical role. Leveraging the new pipeline, they create to the best of the knowledge, the first one step, the first one step diffusion based text to image generator with stable diffusion level quality. How do they measure that? They measure that by FID. They say that their FID is similar to stable diffusion. I'm not going into all the numbers, but essentially they are saying that this SID is FID is similar to stable diffusion. And also they say that their training cost is not that much, which is well, not that much compared to stable diffusion at least. Even if fit is a lot, absolutely, because 200 GPU days is not something to laugh about, but compared to stable diffusion, it is, uh, I think, at least 10x lower. And also their approach uh, their approach outperforms one of the recent uh, GANs, style anti in quality and also in inference time. So yeah, overall a very exciting work. There are some caveats currently, which is mostly on the reproducibility of this work because this is the only GitHub page they have. No, sorry, not this one. This is still decent. This is the only GitHub page that they have, and this does not have a working code right now. So people are a bit concerned if this is reproducible, but I think it would be. I have a feeling that they just, given the name of this folder, I think this is just their research code which they pushed ASAP to GitHub just to like give it some credibility. They'll probably uh smooth on out this repo and give the models and stuff their code is also built on this repo which is much better so most tablet will work
anyway so these are some of the images that they generate and these look decent very decent so something on the motivation and prior work as i say there are have been prior works to make diffusion models faster some of them have focused on distillation to reduce the number of steps and accelerate the inference but these models struggle in the small step regime particularly in the one step regime distillation is just taking a bigger model and distilling it to a smaller model and they say that they also observed that a straightforward distillation of stable diffusion leads to failure this is because of the complex curved trajectories that we have and they use their reflow procedure to fix it right and this is mostly going over the same thing again so there have been other approaches also to uh, x-ray diffusion models some of them change the samplers so you have a sampler for a diffusion model like ddpm ddim or something and there have been samplers which given a model can do inference from it in a faster way so that they can reduce the number of steps to 20 to 50 which is also very big actually uh distillation is one thing and progressive distillation is one famous one there has been this one paper by open ai consistency models which is also a one step diffusion model not exactly a diffusion model but similar to diffusion models and they have one step generation but their performance in large scale text to image generation is still unclear uh, so yeah that was the previous work now coming to their approach and yeah here they mentioned the samplers that there have been other samplers but so the most the one which pushed the performance the most was this progressive distillation which compressed the inference steps to 2 to 4 but still it did not work in a single step so their approach works for a single step Okay, so now going into the actual approach, rectified flow and reflow. So first of all, they gave a general definition of the problem which we are trying to solve, and this approach models the problem in the form of a transport mapping between two distributions, pi naught and pi one. So what they mean is that you have two distributions pi not pi 1 this is your in our case image generation pi not is a normal distribution and this is the image distribution say image of humans or stick for humans and since in image generation we want to go for a, we want to take random noise and generate humans we want to learn a mapping from this distribution to the other distribution and they have you can say that this mapping is we want to learn a mapping t basically they call it a transport mapping which is from optimal control or whatever transport mapping but no need to go into that so essentially for this we aim to learn a gradient function instead we want to model this as an ordinary differential equation uh dz dz by dt equals to v of zt where v is the velocity field which is learned by minimizing this complex thing so breaking this down a bit what we want to do is that since we want to sample this say we have this we have one point x not from here and we have one point x1 from here and there is some 
trajectory which connects them. If you only know x naught, how will you generate something here? Well, you need to follow this trajectory. How can you follow this trajectory? What if you know the gradient at this position, the slope at this position? Then you can make little steps in this direction. Then if you come here and know the gradient, then you can make some other steps here. Then if you come here then and you know the gradient, you can make some other steps here and so I've so on and so forth and you can like reach samples from the other distribution from the initial distribution and for this you will need the gradient and if we call the intermediate variable z and this thing t then what you will need is dz by dt where z is distributed to pi naught z naught and z1 is distributed according to pi 1 so and to learn this gradient function we minimize this objective so yeah v this v is what we are trying to learn and v takes us input xt and t xt is nothing but this any point at time xt so they say where xt is defined by phi of x0 x1 and t x0 x1 and t and it is a time differentiable interpolation between x0 and x1 so it is some interpolation between x0 and x1 it is some intermediate point here and what you want here is that the output of the model v at 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 this point xt comma t should be equal to the gradient here t xt by dt so basically we are learning a function to approximate the gradient at any intermediate point so this is how you they are framing the problem and they notice that for different ways of modeling xt you get different popular algorithms so if you model xt as alpha t x0 plus beta t x1 with certain choices of x alpha t and beta t you will actually get ddim and ddpm however these are very complex and what they say is that for their paper they'll use a very simple thing which is the simplest thing you can think of which is just the linear interpolation between these two points so xt is a linear interpolation 1 minus t x0 plus 3 times x1 which leads to a very simple target objective of x1 minus x0 so your gradient function just needs to approximate this right so what this allows is that instead of having this complex curve trajectories you will instead learn these very simple straight trajectories and this will make life very easy later when you are distilling your model so then they go into the advantages of having a straight flow so say once you learn this function how do you sample from it as i mentioned before you start from an x naught you approximate the gradient here then you move in this direction a bit then you approximate the gradient here then you move in this direction a bit then you approximate the gradient here you move here and then you approximate the gradient here and then you say move here and you finally reach xt after n number of steps ideally you would want to do this a lot and the the more number of times you do this gradient calculation the more uh, uh, the more better you'll approximate the actual trajectory but the more time we'll take so this is called the euler method actually this is the euler method given by z of t plus 1 by n is z t plus v z t upon 1 by n what it basically means is you start from this point calculate the gradient at this point take a small step in that direction and reach the new place and then do this again which is same as what i described here
and they say that obviously the choice in yields a cost to accuracy trade-off as i just described uh if you want to make n small or if you want to do fast simulation you want to learn ot's which can be simulated using a small n and what better than a straight trajectory because if you know that the trajectory connecting z0 to z1 is straight you don't need to take multiple steps you can just calculate the gradient here and just go in one swoop shot and reach z1 which is what they show here so if the od is straight then even a single step yields a perfect simulation if you can see here even a single step leads to a perfect simulation whereas in a curved od you have approximation errors even with multiple uh, steps so this is why they say that straightening the ods is an essential thing for them to reduce the inference cost okay now looking into how they actually use this to straighten trajectories so they say that reflow is an iterative procedure to straighten the trajectories of rectified flow without modifying the marginal distributions hence allowing fast inference so what they do is that it is an iterative procedure so say at the kth iteration you have a particular velocity field which is given by this and and you have uh, you have some x naught and you have some x1 which is generated by sampling from this ode so you have your x naught and you do that euler thing and you get this x1 and this thing is given by vk the gradient at this point is given by vk now in the current iteration you will want to learn a new velocity field vk plus one which starts at this point ends at this point but is straighter so a reflow step turns vk into a new vector field vk plus one that yields straighter ods while x1 has the same distribution as the previous x1 so it has a similar distribution is what they're saying not necessarily the same uh, thing but similar distribution so how they do that is by minimizing this and in this that that is not much uh, it is same as the previous thing so okay yeah one thing how would they be training this thing they will be uh, generating different xt's so they'll be simulating this process multiple times they'll be generating multiple xt's in between and given one x naught and so x naught is random noise and x1 is your image and they'll you can sample random noise and you can you have your images in your data set and you'll sample a random xt in between using whatever phi you have defined in their case it is linear interpolation and you will just uh, approximate the gradient there to be equal to this uh, yeah sorry i think they'll be minimizing it using this this is just for sh showcasing but if you this is what they are actually using so they'll be taking an x naught they'll be taking an x1 they'll be generating the linear interpolations and at any time t and then they'll be minimizing the function x, uh, v of x t comma t to be equal to x1 minus x naught so x1 minus x naught is actually the gradient of the straight line you will get connecting x naught to x1 so this has some nice properties that the distribution of x naught and x1 is the same as the previous thing so you are still ending up at as the same at the same point at a similar point in the same distribution and the trajectories are straighter they also say that if you repeat this process multiple times and if at any point it converges 
So if you find a fixed point of this operator, then that trajectory would be completely straight. So they also say that there's some mathematical thing, but they say that this new mapping has a better coupling and it has a lower transportation cost. So if you have these straight trajectories, your transportation cost is less and that means that it is easier for your model to learn it. Transportation cost can be something like if you what the usual example is that if you have a pile of sand here and if you want to convert it to a pile of sand, something like that, what is the amount of work which needs to be done? So if you think of this pile of sand as a probability distribution one and the other one as a probability distribution two, what is the amount of work that needs to be done? So this is sort of the work that your model needs to learn how to do. So if this is less, then it is easier for your model to run. And that is why they are then going to distill this. Also, they say that because this is a text to image model, we'll condition our model on text. That is fine. So, yeah. So where does stable diffusion come into this whole process? Stable diffusion comes at iteration number one. So there V1 is this thing. V1 is stable diffusion. So they, cal they take stable diffusion and calculate a velocity field or a, or a gradient out, out of it. This is doable. Uh, I mean, other, you can read other papers, but it is a simple formula from which you can using which you can calculate the velocity field uh, of stable diffusion or other diffusion models. It is called the score function actually. And I think so it is called the score function. But yeah, once you have that, you put it in this. So you so this is the algorithm for k less than number of a user defined number of steps. You initialize vk plus one from vk and then you train vk plus one by minimizing this particular objective where x naught and x one can be pre computed using vk. So you can sample x naught and you can generate x one by going through the OD and you can then minimize it using this objective in which you just sample random xt's by linear interpolation and train the model to output the gradient x1 minus x0 at that point so this is how you train the this is how you train a rectified flow so once you have this then you distill it so what this is that theoretically it will require an infinite number of flow steps to obtain ODs with exactly straight trajectories. However, this is not practical. But it was observed that the trajectories of ODs becomes nearly straight with even one or two steps of reflows. So ideally you would want to so each time you upload this reflow apply this reflow procedure, your trajectories become more straight. So if you apply this again and again, then you will get exactly straight trajectories, but you can't do that. But what they observed is that after one uh, one or two applications, their trajectories will straight enough. So once you are satisfied with that, once you have done this reflow procedure and you know now that your trajectories are straight enough, you go and distill this model. So that is what we actually wanted. We wanted to learn a distilled model from this which is faster and so they say that with such approximately straight ODs one approach to boost the performance of one step models is via distillation and this is what you distill it on so this is what how this is how you distill you learn a single step x plus v x of t to compress the mapping from x0 to x1 by minimizing a similarity loss between the images. So this is convoluted, but to break it down, you have an X naught, you have your VK, 
you can use this VK to generate your X one, right? Which which is this thing, ODE of whatever whatever. Now you learn a separate function V, which takes an X naught. And in a single step, in a single step, you get x1 dash equals to x0 plus v of x0. Condition non-text obviously, but we don't care about that. That is all. Everything is condition non-text. And you minimize these or you maximize the similarity between these two things. So this is the new function which you are trying to learn to approximate this rectified flow thing and yeah this is how you distill your model and in the end after you have this v you can just take an x naught which is just noise and get your new images using a single step and for the similarity function they use the perpetual learn perceptual image batch similarity laws lpips but yeah, you can use other losses also, but I think that is what is used in distillation papers, so that is what they used. And they say that it is essential to use reflow to get good coupling before applying distillation. And just slightly, the, it is confusing what distillation and reflow are, like how are they different. So they say that while distillation tries to approximate the mapping from X0 to X1, just read this as X1. Reflow yields a new mapping x, x1 that can be more regular and smooth due to lower transport costs. So, what this is that reflow, so say this is the target distribution, this is the input distribution. Reflow learns straighter trajectories, like okay, not that this straight, but something like straighter trajectories while distillation learns a single step to how from how to go from x0 to x1 so yeah also you can do classifier free guidance again uh, it is the same as classifier guidance you do in other things this is where you are passing your text conditioning you'll once pass the text conditioning you'll once not pass the text conditioning and then pass both of them uh, an interpolation of them as the actual output so yeah, that is how they do stuff. Then it is mostly, mostly experiments. Okay, so now coming into the experiments. Uh, so on this figure, on the left, they show, oh, compare the inference times and the FID. So initially, what this says is that the their blue one is stable diffusion, the yellow one is their model. So their model has a similar, the bigger, the big model which they train has a similar FID compared to stable as stable diffusion. And when you distill uh, stable diffusion, you get this. When you distill their model, you get this. And as you can see, uh, their performance of their distilled model is much better than the performance of the stable diffusion distilled model. Lower FID is much better. And this is shown here for similar prompts is what I'm assuming. This is what stable diffusion creates. This is what their model creates, which is of not exactly the same quality, but almost the same quality as stable diffusion. However, this is where the magic happens. If you distill stable diffusion, naively this is what you get which is bad but if you distill their model then it preserves most of its quality so what it means is that uh, their model works well up their model does not lose much of its quality after distillation so yeah that is good then here they compare their approach against progressive distillation and other distillation approaches and they claim that their method is the best which is what all papers do 
here I think they compare it. Yeah, I think this is again some more comparison with other models and their models are forming the best. Here they measure the straightening effect of reflow. So they have some measure of straightness of the trajectories, which is basically given by how much it approximates this Z1 minus Z0, the gradient. Lower is probably better in this graph. So stable diffusion is not straight at all. But after a few rectified flow steps, they after even two steps of the procedure, it straightens up a lot. And after three, it straightens up even more. And here you can see those trajectories. So yeah, their approach does work to straighten up things. Then here they show that, uh, so this is stable diffusion. This is their two, uh, two rectified flow means they have applied the rectified procedure twice. Three means that they have applied the procedure thrice. N equals to 25 is uh, using these models to like applying the Euler method with N equals to 25. N equals to one is applying the Euler method with N equal to one. And distillation is the models obtained by distilling these top models, these stable diffusion or two rectified flow or three rectified flow. So what they observe is for stable diffusion, n equal to one is basically crap because it has curved trajectories and and using Euler method with n equal to one is very bad. However, for these rectified flow models, since the trajectories are straight, even n equal to one, an Euler step of n equal to one works significantly better than stable diffusion and also as you increase the number of rectified flow steps your approximation becomes even better because your trajectories are even straighter also uh, distillation as I said distillation their models distill well and the more you increase the rectified flow the better the distillation happens but even the two model is not that bad that's what they claim which shows in the results. Then there is some other comparison with other models and their model performs the best. They did claim that if they scale up their model a bit and they train it for longer, they are getting better, uh, better results. And it is justified and the train high, more training is justified because their approach is faster so that, so they can actually train it for longer. So yeah, I think that is mostly it. Also, they say that because of the straight trajectories, their latent space is well behaved. So they can perform latent space interpolation as seen here. And also like starting from the same random noise, the pose and lighting are preserved across different prompts. So if you have a particular, if you, if you go from the same noise, same initial lines and you change the prompt you get similar looking images which like they have some semantic information which is same so their pose and lighting are preserved in this case so this means that their latent space is well behaved it is sort of like GANs it's not messed up it is a uh, better latent space they also say that their latent space of their distilled models align with the uh, two-stepped model so the teacher model the rectified model which was the teacher model so one advantage of this is that this allows because the one-step models are easy to run this understanding the latent space will also give you info information about the latent space of the teacher model itself so this is where they show this that uh, given the same random noise and text prompts, the one-step model generates similar images with the uh, two RF model, showing that the latent space aligns. So this is two RF, and I think this is the distilled model. So they have similar images given the same prompt, given the same inputs basically. Here they look into the effect of the 
number of Euler steps you do, Euler approximations you do with stable diffusion and uh, their rectified model. Not the distilled model, the rectified model. The distilled model is one step, but they want to see how good is if you can like reduce the number of steps in the uh, teacher model, which is a rectified model. And sure enough, uh, like compared to stable diffusion for lower number of Euler approximations, their model performs much better because their trajectories are straighter. Also, they say that they can pass the, since their model is very fast and single step, they can use it to generate small images and then pass this image to a bigger model. In this case, it's stable division Excel refiner to generate high resolution images. So they say that their single step model can be sort of used as a quick preview. It can be used to generate fast previewers. It used to serve as fast previews to quickly filter out unwanted images. So you can use this, their model, which is the faster, quicker model to preview images. And once you're fine with that particular image, you can scale it up using some other bigger model. So this is what they mention here. And then they go over some future work. They say that in the future, they also want to first is that their model did not converge, so they can train even further. Then they say that they want to integrate control net into this. So a one step control net. Then they said that they want to integrate uh, LoRa into this LoRa approximation of models or low rank adapters uh, so that you can like take one of these models and fine tune it for other tasks very easily they say that the control net modification is very easy whereas the LoRa modification is harder to do and some other changes also can be done is what they say so yeah that was mostly for the paper so overall right now with the code not being the data that were not being complete but if it does become reproducible then it could be a very very influential paper that's what i think so yeah i that's it for the video uh, thanks for watching